Well, on the other hand, authorities say drought is less of a challenge this year than normal. So what does all of this mean? We're joined now in Washington here by Tian Ye Liao. He's a research associate at the World Resources Institute Global Water Program, a very important think tank here in Washington, D.C. Really Thanks. important work that you do. Thank you. Um, so this news that China's floods and droughts are better this year. We see these images, the video, uh, the children. It looks horrendous. How can we say it's better this year? Right. Well, basically, uh, there's two types of uh, droughts. Um, you know, there's um, uh, long-term droughts and there's short-term droughts. And um, uh, basically, if you look at long-term droughts, uh, based on uh, our data, uh, that uh, about uh, 76 million people in China uh, is, uh, live in areas where uh, it has high exposure to droughts. Um, but, um, uh, and, and that's mostly in the northern part of the country, you know, the provinces uh, of uh, Inner Mongolia, Ningxia, uh, Shanxi, Henan. And um, one of China's uh, water problem is that uh, the mismatch, uh, geospatial mismatch between uh, water resources and uh, the food and energy production. Um, so the northern part of the country is relatively uh, uh, dry, uh, water poor, uh, but it also has a lot of, you know, demand on uh, uh, coming from mm -hmm. uh, irrigated agriculture and um, uh, energy industry. So we're in the middle of uh, the rainy season, which lasts right. until September. How do you differentiate between what is normal for China, the rainy season, and right. global warming? Right, that's uh, that's a good question. So uh, we, based on our future projections, uh, we think that climate change is likely to increase uh, the um, uh, frequency and the intensity of uh, extreme events like floods and droughts. Um, um, you know, uh, basically, we will be uh, experiencing uh, more. Uh, you know, heat waves, intense rainfalls, and droughts. Um, 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 because of, you know, the shifting uh, climate. What can the people who, who live in these regions do to um, lessen the blow of all of this? Uh, sorry. What can they do to, right. uh, to, to alleviate the pain and the suffering? I mean, most of these people don't have the means to leave. Right, right. That's true. So if you think about uh, if you think about droughts, uh, then uh, we'd say you know um, uh, uh, most like more than sixty percent of the water use in China uh, is for the agriculture sector, and um, um, so you know and also farmers are usually the most affected and most uh, vulnerable to, to extreme weather's. So definitely you know if you think about droughts, then uh, um, the um, um, uh, the use of, you know, more water efficient uh, irrigation technology um, uh, could definitely mitigate the risk. But also, you know, from the government's perspective, uh, you know, better understanding water related to risks um, could uh, help you know, make more, help government make more informed decisions. Uh, China has, China, the Chinese government has already been, you know, uh, doing quite some efforts uh, along these lines. Uh, and one of the projects that we're doing is to help the government to measure um, uh, water stress um, across the country. All right, Tian Ye Liao, thank you so much with thank the you. Global Water Program. We appreciate all your effort.